Many rappers who blow up are lucky to have experienced such a rare opportunity. Being able to make a living from making music is something that most people can't say they've ever done. However, when their career starts to decline, there are different ways of dealing with it. One way in particular is to live in denial, holding onto the fame and fortune that they once held so close. So today we're going to be looking into rappers who cannot accept that they've fallen off, starting off with French Montana. Also, by the way, my name is Matty Balls, and if you guys like music related videos, make sure to stick around and subscribe. I'm going to be posting one every week this year at 12 p.m. CST on Sundays. So uh, yeah, stick around. Now let's get into it. French Montana went from having multiple hits in the mid 2010s to faking streams and desperately clinging on to fame by the end of the decade. I'm not going to go too deep into French Montana's come up since he's been in the game for a very long time. He's released a ton of mixtapes, a handful of albums, and tons of huge singles over the span of his career. He started blowing up a ton with songs like Pop That, Lockjaw, No Stylus, and of course his biggest song ever, Unforgettable. But one thing that was always notable about all of French Montana's big songs was the features. Most people weren't really tuning in to Unforgettable or No Stylus to hear French. They wanted to hear Sway Lee and Drake. But this is something that French Montana didn't seem to realize until his numbers started going down. His place in hip hop is made most obvious when you think about that picture Diddy posted on Instagram with Jay-Z, Nas, and Kendrick with French Montana photoshopped out. Diddy didn't even crop him out. He went through the effort of photoshopping French Montana out so he could say three kings, three great friends, Love you guys. Honestly, I, I feel bad for him. That had to have been heartbreaking. In 2019, his third studio album, Montana, sold 25,000 copies first week. That's about half of what his previous album sold. Not only that, but he was also caught in a fake stream controversy around this time as well. In December of 2019, Twitter user Carlemagne posted a thread accusing French Montana and his team of hacking into people's Spotify accounts to stream his song, Writing on the Walls, with many screenshots of other people saying their account was randomly playing the song. They also noted how the song was 21 on the Spotify charts, but it was 1192 on the Apple Music charts, which clearly indicated how the streams were being faked on Spotify. I went into more detail on this in my video called The Biggest Scam in the Music Industry, so if you're interested in botted streams, feel free to check it out after this video. And despite how crazy faking your streams is, things somehow managed to get worse for French. In April of 2020, French Montana made one of the biggest mistakes of his entire career when he said that he has more hits than Kendrick Lamar. More specifically, he said to Complex, I mean, honestly, you could put somebody like Kendrick Lamar next to me on the same stage at a festival. I might outshine him. Not because I'm a better rapper or whatever it is, it's just that I got more hits. This sent the internet into a frenzy, with everybody clowning on French Montana. He even had Young Thug making fun of him. Stupid ass, he got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. Everybody on the internet collectively agreed that both statistically speaking and musically speaking, Kendrick Lamar is better. Not only have you never had a number one hit, Kendrick has had eight laying in the top 10 while you've only had two. Still an accomplishment, but it's nowhere near enough for you to be like, oh, I got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. This seemed to be the beginning of the end for French Montana's career. Following this, a hilarious thread started when someone tweeted a Squid Games meme saying, for the next game, you need to name five French Montana songs without features. French Montana himself then decided to respond to this tweet with like 14 of his own songs, with the top reply being, all you proved is that French Montana is the only person that can name five solo French Montana songs. After this, French Montana had a bit of a breakdown on Twitter, just spamming about how people have amnesia and are forgetting all of the amazing albums that he had given them. It turns out though, that this meltdown and the whole idea that the listeners have amnesia was actually just promo for his next album, they got amnesia. He dropped the lead single for the album, FWMGAB, right after the Twitter drama. So it was clearly an attempt at promotion. Months later, he released the album, They Got Amnesia. And if you can't tell, it seems like the title of the album was literally inspired by people who apparently had amnesia since they couldn't remember how successful French Montana was. But in reality, it just seemed like he was in denial of what his place was in the rap game. Most recently, he released a million different versions of a bunch of his songs on his new album, Mac and Cheese 5, likely trying to get more streams or have more of a chance at going viral on TikTok. Now, what French Montana did was not just release Mac and Cheese 5, but he released it again and again. 
and again and again and again. And if these six versions of the album were not enough to get your attention on streaming services, don't worry, because French then went on to release every version of the album's 21 songs as singles, so they didn't just infect his streaming profile, but all of the rappers featured. One of the reasons he did this with the singles is because it would spam appear on every featured artist's Spotify page. Oh, and he also released a 126 song version of the album as well called Mac and Cheese 5 Versions. One person tweeted, this looks like a cry for help. Like, damn, you must really need some streams. It was honestly just pathetic and very embarrassing for our boy French. And even after all of these horrible marketing gimmicks, French Montana's Mac and Cheese 5 only sold 34,000 copies first week. Not only that, but it seemed like he was involved in a vinyl sales scam in an attempt to boost album sales. Essentially, before his album released, French Montana had vinyls available for pre-order for only $5. According to Billboard, for these sales to count, they would have to be shipped by the album's release date. A Twitter user by the name of Dro said, French Montana sold vinyl records on his site for $5 pre-orders back in January, with all the albums needing to be shipped on release date to count towards sales. It seems almost everyone that purchased it has had it delivered to a random address. This seems to be a case of fake shipping confirmations in order to boost sales numbers for the album. Multiple people responded to the tweet claiming the same thing happened to them that their record was supposedly delivered, but to some random location. So it seems like French Montana's team had a bunch of fake shipping confirmations made in an attempt to get those sales in. At this point in his career, French Montana keeps trying to grasp onto the fame that he once had, when in reality, he's just digging himself a deeper hole. I'd honestly be surprised if anyone takes him serious after everything he's said and done in the past few years. And just because French Montana's career stinks, doesn't mean you have to. Lately, I've been really trying to up my fragrance game and make sure I smell good all the time. So that's why this video is brought to you by Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that allows you to choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for only $17. Instead of balling out on a whole bottle, you can subscribe to Scentbird and get a variety of vials to try. Each vial has 120 sprays, which is perfect for trying out new stuff. They come in these clean, protective cases that are super easy to unlock. And as you can tell, this month I got four new fragrances that are all amazing, with my favorite one being Cedar and Acacia from Sense of Wood. This one is absolutely fantastic. And that's the best part about the subscription is now that I know I enjoy this particular fragrance, I can commit to a full bottle. You get to pick what scents you want, so there aren't any surprises. There are over 700 perfumes, colognes, and a ton of unisex options to choose from. They have a lot of brands like Gucci, Prada, and Versace, along with some more indie brands like Skylar, Confessions of Rebel, and Heretic. So to make sure you guys are always smelling fresh, make sure to use my code MATTYBALLS55 for 55% off of your first month at Scentbird. That makes it just a little bit over $7 for your first month, and it's available in the USA and Canada. Like I said, I got some other great scents this month, like this one here called uh, Mano Freisch from Versace, and I just know I said that wrong because they make these so hard to pronounce. There are so many great options at Scentbird, so I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. And make sure to check out the links down below. Now let's get back to the rest of the video. Lil Pump is a rapper who, when he was on top of the world, was essentially told by J. Cole that he would fall off. And when it happened, he denied that it happened. Most of us know Lil Pump, but if you're not familiar with him, he's one of the main artists that was responsible for the whole mumble rap label. Lil Pump started buzzing in 2016 and blew up even more in 2017 with songs like D-Rose and Boss. His songs can be characterized by their lack of lyricism and repeating of lyrics, like the chorus on D-Rose. Then later in 2017, he released the song Gucci Gang, which absolutely blew up, peaking at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 and eventually going platinum. After that, he released his debut self-titled album with features from artists like Lil Yachty, Chief Keef, Gucci Mane, and more. These songs were fun, but the lack of lyrical content was something that many people thought wouldn't last, including J. Cole himself. See, J. Cole and Lil Pump had a little bit of a beef, although it was more so playful. Lil Pump started it all by saying F. J. Cole, likely just to piss people off and get more attention. And it worked, as many old heads were mad and the young kids loved it. This was a trend for a while, but J. Cole never responded, 
at least directly. However, after releasing his album KOD in April of 2018, people noticed that the song 1985 seemed to have something to do with Lil Pump. In the song, he says, All these people popping now is young. Everybody say the music they make is dumb. You gotta give a boy a chance to grow some. He continues, I heard one of them diss me. I'm surprised. I ain't tripping. Listen good to my reply. Come here, little man. Let me talk with you. See if I can paint for you the larger picture. By this point, it's clear that J. Cole is talking about Lil Pump, but decides to take an empathetic approach since Pump was only 18 at the time. Cole congratulates him on all of his success and even tells him to never quit touring because that's where most of the money comes from. But then Cole says, You could have bought a crib with all that bread you done blew. I know you think this type of revenue is never ending, but I want to take a minute just to tell you that it ain't true. One day, them kids that's listening gonna grow up and get too old for that shit that made you blow up. Now your show's looking light because they don't show up which unfortunately means the money slow up now you scrambling and hoping to get hot again but you forgot you only popped because you was riding trends i'm just telling you what's probably gonna happen when you rapping about the type of shit you rapping about it's a faster route to the bottom i wish you good luck i'm hoping for your sake that you ain't as dumb as you look j cole laid out to pump exactly what the current status of his career was and what would eventually happen rather than dissing him like many would. Funnily enough, they even had a conversation on J. Cole's page, squashing the beef while Cole seemingly tried to give Pump some more advice. I guess came up with the f J. Cole shit. Who's trying to pepper? I really wrote it down. Because if I didn't write it out, I would have forgot, right. yeah. You know, I was in the room one day and I seen that shit in my, like, in my comments. People were like, fuck J. Cole, fuck J. Cole. Like, oh, so what? it was already happening? Yeah, low key, yeah. No. But Lil Pump did not heed J. Cole's warning. Slowly but surely, with pretty much every release after 2018, his numbers started going down. People were tuning in expecting something different from Pump, but he wasn't giving it to them. It was the same gimmick and cookie cutter formula on every song and every album. And by the end of 2020, he was in the exact same position that J. Cole predicted. He even appeared at a Trump rally in 2020, seemingly grasping at straws for attention, as he did literally say F Donald Trump a few years prior. And speaking of sound music and other things, one of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. <laughs> there he is. Does everyone know who he is? Uh, do you know how big he is? Come on up here. It was pretty funny but just seemed like another publicity stunt for Pump. Eventually, in 2022, he was interviewed by bootleg Kev, who actually asked Lil Pump if he thought J. Cole's predictions were true. Do you feel like he predicted kind of like what ended up happening with your rap career? Nope. No. Because I'm still here. I got, I I'm, not saying that you're, I'm not saying that you're not like still fucking rich and successful. I just mean in terms of like, you know, I feel like there's so many parts of that era of rap where like people got fame so fast they were so young you know what i'm saying like and i feel like that was some of the foresight that he was saying not even necessarily about quote unquote falling off you know what i mean uh, do you don't think he, you don't think he predicted anything I don't think pretty shit. Despite Kev trying to ask that in the most respectful way possible, Pump had too much pride to accept the fact that he had fallen off. Most recently, he released his album Lil Pump 2, which did not do too well. According to Wikipedia, the album was projected to earn significantly less units in its first week than his previous album failing to chart on any chart. He was even getting clowned on this for his song Pump Rock X Heavy Metal, which was essentially a really bad attempt at some type of rock song. Regardless, J. Cole perfectly predicted Lil Pump's future, and he was still unable to admit it. On a very similar note to Lil Pump, Smoke Perp also had a hard time accepting his position in the rap game after he fell off. Smoke Perp is a rapper who really blew up in the shadow of Lil Pump, although he did have some hits on his SoundCloud, like the song Audi. Just like Lil Pump, Smoke Perp was one of the many buzzing Florida rappers, and even collabed with artists like XXXTentacion. After releasing his hit song Audi, he followed up with his mixtape Dead Star that debuted at 42 on the Billboard 200 with features from artists like Travis Scott and Chief Keef. He even became a XXL freshman in 2018. But after that, Smoke Perp struggled to make waves. Other than his feature on Costa Rica, which was outshined by the many other guest verses, he didn't really have many hits. Don't get me wrong, he had a ton of songs that performed fairly well throughout the entirety of his career. But just like Lil Pump, his career didn't show much longevity. And just like French Montana, many of his songs were carried by the features. Not only that, but with how close he was with Pump and how much bigger Pump was, Smoke Perp 
Perp's career was kind of in Pump's shadow. One thing that would hint towards Smoke Perp's downward spiral was his freestyle on Tim Westwood in 2019, which, if you haven't heard, was awful. I'm a motherfucking stoner. I'm a motherfucking boner. I got a motherfucking boner. Yeah, my F in front of us, I got a boner. He claims that he was just having fun, but that didn't stop the entire internet from clowning on him for years to come. The video has a whopping 70,000 dislikes, and they even had to turn off the comments. Even to this day, I think people are still joking about the freestyle. About a month after that, Smoke Perp posted on his Instagram story, first they said I'm falling off, then their new excuse was we want old Perp, made the whole Florida JIT album like old mosh pit Perp, and now those same people are acting like they been knew I was about to turn back up like this. I'm streaming crazy and my music going up more than ever. Basically, he was denying that he fell off, saying he was doing better than ever before, and then was trying to promote his next album, Florida JIT. But people saw through it, and one of the top comments is, Bro can't accept the fact that he fell off so he keeps lying to himself, which was honestly true. Especially since right after that, he released his album, Florida JIT, and it only sold 5,000 copies, and only 130 digital albums were sold as well. He got clowned into oblivion on the internet. So much so that he even played into the joke and said another free project on the way. Perp really took a hit here and wouldn't really be talked about much more until 2022. A video was posted online of Smoke Perp performing at a show to a crowd that looked like it was about 20 people. Like the internet does, everyone began making fun of his fall off online. Someone in his Instagram comments asked him, is it true that you only had a few people at some show? I saw some video about it, I think. To which Perp replied, yeah, there was a show that was pretty empty that I didn't have to do, but I'm gonna give my fans a show regardless, always. I wouldn't be here without them. I think a lot of fans liked this response and thought he was being kind hearted, but it was a show on his tour, so I think he did have to do it. I think that was a lie. Regardless, shortly after that, Hello You Seen reported that Smoke Perp didn't show up to a show in Cleveland and that the 20 people waiting for him were kicked out of the venue after requesting refunds. A lot of artists struggle to swallow their pride and admit that they have fallen far from where they once were, and some people may believe them when they say that they're doing better than ever. But Perp's actions over the last couple of years have really shown where his career is at. Most recently, he's been seen selling features and trying to nickel and dime his fans. And they're like, we need approval from Smoke Perp because, you know, he has a bit of status in the music world. Uh -huh. We need a DM from him confirming this release. I'm like, okay, no, no issue. I text him and he gets back to me with, no, nah, you didn't pay to clear it. And I'm like, wait, what? I paid you, I paid you for the feature, no? He's like, yeah, but you didn't pay for clearance. You paid me for the feature. So I'm like, I paid you for a song I can't release. What do you mean? Exactly. Like, why would I do that? Perp then claimed that his price to clear a song was 10K, but that he would settle for $500, which is a telltale sign that Perp desperately needed some money. Right as I'm about to press send, he unsends the confirmation message and everything else about crypto. And I actually screen recorded it because I saw the unsend messages coming up. So I started screen recording it. Yeah, I'll yeah. send this to you, bro. So basically, Perp was trying to scam this guy, which really shows how far his career has fallen. Not only that, but him and Pump have both been trying to make a comeback recently. And they were actually making TikTok skits in an attempt to promote their latest song, Tesla. And that's always been viewed as a bit of a corny way to promote a song. So it's strange seeing artists that used to be insanely huge doing that on TikTok. And a while ago, he even posted a snippet of him heavily biting Yeet, which people were really upset about. So it's clear that Smoke Perp is struggling to accept the reality of the situation he's in. YB and Amir is an artist I've covered multiple times on this channel, but recently he's had a bit of a meltdown that I believe needs an update. Like I said, I've covered Namir before, so if you want a more in-detail breakdown of his whole career, feel free to check out this video on him after this one. Namir even said he liked it. But basically, Namir blew up with songs like Rubbing Off the Paint and was fairly successful for a handful of years. He helped put on artists like Almighty J and Corday, who in particular would go on to be much more successful than Namir himself, especially since fans liked his lyrical abilities. But as Corday rose, Namir began to fall in the shadows of his friend. Couple that with cringy songs like Soul Train and just overall bad music, Namir began falling off hard. Because of this, Namir started doing a lot of goofy things that led the entire internet to lose any respect they had left for him. He even had his own L compilation. Other than songs like Apostapa with 21 Savage going viral on TikTok in 2021, Namir hadn't seen much success since like 
2018. He did briefly sign with Def Jam, but after releasing his album Faster Car Music, it's likely he was dropped since it didn't perform so well. By 2022, it was pretty well established that YBN Namir had fallen off, but even then, he was denying it. He said, People constantly saying I fell off. Whole time I'd just be chilling and staying to myself. I've been viral my whole life. This stuff cool, but it's really whatever. They would never really understand. But that was not the last time that Namir would deny falling off, because he went on another huge rant after a recent beef with Aiden Ross. About a month ago, Aiden Ross offered Namir 20k to box in an event he was hosting, but Namir asked for 100k. Aiden responded on stream saying that Namir was not worth 100k, and instead talked about how he not only would have made 20k, but that he would have also gotten a ton of free promo, and maybe it would have helped to revive his career. Following that, they went back and forth for a little bit. Same nigga that just paid two million dollars for a nigga to sit next to you. Don't mention me if it's some bullshit. I don't give a fuck about no free promo, no decoding shit, because I'm not that type of nigga. I got it. Namir, oh, Namir, you're not worth $100,000. You fell off. You suck at music. You failed your music career. Namir decided to respond to this on Twitter by showing off all of his platinum and gold plaques, with the caption, one hit wonder with a yawning emoji. But the issue was, no one was calling him a one hit wonder. They were saying that he fell off. So then he went to show his Google net worth, which is supposedly $4 million. However, those are notoriously unreliable. The top comment on this post is literally, YBN Namir is the first person to claim his Google net worth, which is true because these are super inaccurate. And there was also a bunch of Instagram posts that I can't find anymore because he deleted them, but basically he was posting all these like unreleased songs and playing them out of his notes app with tons of big features and big names. And he was basically trying to show off that he still has hit making potential. So clearly Namir has denied falling off and decided to flex his money and his accolades. But just like with Smoke Perp, his real situation is revealed by his actions. At the beginning of this month, he was caught charging fans $3 to DM him, and then tweeted about it defending himself. Even more recently, he posted to his story, Lock in with CEO YBN Namir. Starts with a feature but could easily go to, Roll with me to all my shows, interviews, premieres, and real studio sessions. A young man will fly you from your hometown and change your life. Call one of my other rapper homies and set up a collaboration for you and make you go platinum. When you sign to me, I will blow you up. I honestly don't have any words for this. I have never seen an artist so down bad for money that they're gonna pretend to be a CEO and a professional marketer and it's just insane. But to be honest, you can't help but feel a little bit bad for people like Namir and some of the others in this video. I swear to God, I, I check comments. I'm not the type of person to just, oh yeah, I'm not going to check my yeah. YouTube comments or Instagram. I check all that shit. And I'm like, damn, y'all really saying this? Y'all was just on my motherfucking side. I'll be like, damn, I'll be, I'll be feeling hurt in the motherfucking house. I mean, imagine the entire internet clowning on you for years, making fun of all of your failures. You already got to deal with the financial issues and knowing that your career is over. And now you have a bunch of people online pointing it out to you and reminding you of it. And I would tell you guys to be nicer to these artists because they're people too, but it's the internet and I know that won't happen. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can subscribe. I can ask you to do that. So go ahead, do it and like the video and comment um, below. Peace. And thanks again to Sendbird for sponsoring this video. Make sure to click the links below to get 55% off of your first month today.